Hey everybody, TBG Hunter here, and welcome back to more Sly 2 Band of Thieves. Last time, we arrived in India for a party to show off Clockwork's newly acquired wings by Rajan. Unfortunately, I left my invitation back in Paris, so we had to sneak our way into the palace compound and then sneak our way into the party itself to get some recon photos on the wings, the guests, and Rajan himself. Tonight, we are going to be heading back out with Sly, and we are going to be starting his set of missions. Sly is technically the only one who can't even do anything right now. Murray's mission doesn't even show up until you do the, the drawbridge mission. So, what I think we're going to do tonight starting off, I think we're going to go and lower the, the drawbridge, let that in for Murray, then we'll go and do Sly's other mission at the ballroom. But for now, uh, I could go the way I did uh, the first time to get into the palace, but I want to go this way. The reason I want to go this way is because there are other rocks that you could actually get the uh, prompt for the Ninja Spire Jump uh, tutorial Fano Bob over here, but also the fact that there's also a couple clue bottles hiding over here. These are actually pretty evilly placed, I will admit, because you're kind of inclined to go to the other drawbridge, uh, the other side of the drawbridge to get the, the rocks there. And this one's a little bit more dangerous because there's an easier chance for the guard up there to see you if he actually walks past because if he sees you when you do the ninja spire jump onto this rock, yeah, it counts as him actually seeing that you're there and he will go after you. But for now, we'll just take him out that easily. Head over here, break this another bottle that's on this spike, and then uh, let's head our way over to the mission. Now, interesting bit of trivia about Rajan, and I wanted to save this until after we did the... Oh, that's not the way up to the roof. Uh, I wanted to save that until after we did the mission where we got the recon on Rajan and also saw that Neela was in the same room as him. In an earlier build of the game, uh, Rajan was actually going to be Neela's father. And it got cut out because the devs thought yeah, it was going to be too much of a confusing thing for this game. But it's a really interesting fact. I guess it's the same reason why they're both the same species. It's just something I wanted to share. I'd love to, pal, but the winch is all locked down. You know where I can find the keys? Key guards have recently taken up positions around the palace. Sneak in, pick all of their pockets, and bring the keys back to the lockdown winch. Alright, easy. Got guard all the way over there at the guest house. We got a bunch of guards over here. We got a guard by the palace. We got a guard back there. And we got a guard outside by the elephant patrol. He is probably going to be the most painful one to get first, so of course that's the one I'm going to go for first. Especially with the fact that that elephant is getting uncomfortably close. Oh boy. Uh, yeah, you know what? It's too risky. Alright. I shouldn't be detected. Nah, too close. There we go. Just gonna sneak away off here. I could take the guards out now that we took the keys from them, but nah. I was feeling generous with that guy. He's not doing anything. He's just enjoying the views, enjoying the nights, the night, uh, the fresh night air. No reason to take him out. Oh, I thought one of the monkey guards heard me. I just heard like an ook. Wow, you barely had any money in your pocket, so with that, you must die. Let's break that statue as well. That's a statue I thought you could break uh, back when we were in Cairo. Uh, it was like the one right next to Murray when we met him. Because uh, that was the one I was thinking of over here instead of there. Just hop up over here. Now, this guy might be a bit of a challenge. Also... Is he not wearing a hat? Oh, draw distance is just taking his hat off him. Which is really weird. I'm gonna just get his attention away from there. Try ringing that gong and picking his pocket when he returns to his post. Bentley, I think you mean before he returns to his post, because I don't think if he returns to his post, then he's gonna be in a position where I can snipe that key from him. But I will take him. Oh, God. Well, you know what? This is actually a really good time to show off the new uh, combat dodge technique we got. It's not really good. Oh, hi. 
Uh, basically, it's just Sly does a, a fast, like, dodge to the side. Although, with these monkey guards where they do an attack that sweeps all around them, it's not really that, well, useful. I will take him out, though. Oops. Oh, wrong button. There we go. The one good thing I will say about combat dodge is the fact that it does not take up any, like, gadget uh, ability points. It, it's it's like a free move that Sly gets. I think it's like one of the very like few like three gadgets Sly can use that does not take up uh, uh, gadget points. All right, just gonna wait for this guy to go by. Surprisingly, these guards have not had a lot of shiny stuff in their pockets, which upsets me greatly because I need that money. go in here this is probably one of the worst areas for guards because they are so prominent inside that little hallway it's insane also a nice little thing to note right up there you can't see the the stuff for anywhere but in that little cave that is the safe house location I always like that you can see the safe house from where you wherever you are inside the map Although, some of them are a little bit more obvious, but I like the more natural stuff that they have in converting to safe houses. And speaking of stuff I like, I like money. Alright, we got the guard down there by the bridge, and finally the guard over there at the guest house. Oh, he's got a megaphone. Eh, let's take him out as well come up here because over there is another of the clue bottles. Yoink. Sir, where's your hat? Oh, there it is. Hello, draw distance of that clue bottle down there. What the hell is this guy doing? He's just going back and forth all over the place. Oink. And finally, let's take him out. All right. Uh, a good number of clue bottles are actually hiding over here on the guest house as well. There's one down by this suspension bridge that we can't really do anything with right now. But up here, a lot of the clue bottles are usually up on these, like, towers with the lights on them. And some at, like, the base of the towers. Just gotta be really careful because this place has a lot of guards that are up on the rooftops. And flashlight guards as well. I think there's, like, three that patrol down here at, a, at the same time. There's the other guard. I'm just gonna... Ignore him right now. Oh, boy. Here, smash more bottles. Do you have a shiny in your pocket? No, you do not. I think the other clue bottle is all the way on the other side. Oh, and there's one down by him as well. The final treasure for this area as well is down here by the guest house. You can kind of see it down in that little, like, uh, patio area that's below the flashlight guard. I'll show it off as soon as we grab the key. That way we know where it is for a future run. Yoink. If anything, uh, Bentley will have to come back here later. Or maybe I can grab it a slide. Yeah, I probably should grab it a slide because we got a mission of. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I think we'll get it with Bentley. Sly's got a, a, gotten like two of the treasures associated with him, so it's it's good to give Bentley some more time with it. We do need to give some treasures to Murray because the poor guy hasn't gotten a single one yet. Also, I just love the challenge of trying to get treasures back with other members of the gang. Oh boy. I'm just gonna go this way. Grab the shiny that's in his pocket, because, of course, my kleptomania is showing again. Oh, silver pen. Very fancy. Unfortunately, it was enough to save your life. And finally, that should be the last clue bottle over by the guest house. Slide, why do you not have any traction up there? Oh. Make a liar out of me again, game. Wouldn't be the first time. I see the other clue bottle that's up there. Oh, boy. And, uh, line this up just right. There we go. Uh-oh. 
I've been found out. I'm not here. Uh, just to check and make sure. Okay, that's good. That should be all the clue bottles over by the guest house, and we're only missing four clue bottles, so we're making good time with them. to go by and hopefully soon because that elephant is coming. Ooh, and you got a shiny as well. I will gladly relieve you of it. Silver! I thought you flashlight guards were supposed to be loaded with gold stuff. Right, now that that is taken care of, let's make our way up to the palace and let's get this party started. Oh god, two flashlight guards coming up that walkway? That has never happened before. But you do have a shiny in your pocket, so I'll let it slide this time. And a gold. You know what? Just for that, you get to live. Slide, where were you going? I didn't want you to go down to that spire, or that spike, spear, whatever it is. Okay, not what I wanted, but I'll take it anyways because we still made it over here. I hear another clue bottle somewhere around here. There it is. That'll be 28. I know exactly where the 30th clue bottle is. It's actually right outside the area where the safe is, so we're good gonna save getting that one until we have the mission for it. Uh, you know what? Just because we're almost done with all the clue bottles, we might as well just make a quick run over here. I think in this area was the location of the 29th clue bottle. Yep, I hear the clinking. Let me just take care of this guard real quick. Yoink! And smash. Oh, right. I think it was like around one of these, like, water wheel stuff. I hear the clinking, but I don't see it. That's because it's up here. I could have sworn there was one by those water wheels. Hmm. Is my memory just failing me, or was it just never there to begin with? I see a flashlight card with a shiny in his pocket, but uh, I uh, gotta get jobs done. I'm sorry, shiny. I'll come back for you later. Hello, I'm here for the dance. Oh, sorry, sir, but we have a dress code. You got a tuxedo? Uh, no. Sorry, pal. No tux, no entry. Well, that's gonna make things difficult. Sorry, Sly. Somehow I totally overlooked the need for formal wear. Now, that guy's not going to let you in without a tuxedo. Don't beat yourself up, Bentley. At a party this ritzy, there has to be a spare penguin suit around here somewhere. Try the guest house. Someone may have overpacked. But I was just over at the guest house. All right. Well, we gotta make our way over there. Ooh, I see a shiny. And this actually does count as a separate mission. Like that mission to like uh, go to the ballroom and stuff and get the night entry. That counts as a mission completion. That not that it shows in the progress status. But yeah, over there, uh, you see still a tuxedo. Hello. Goodbye. Wow, you really like patrolling that area, don't you guys? 
All right, fine. I'll wait for him to go past, and then we'll sneak our way into the guest house. Honestly, I could just run right past him and hope for the best and not getting hit by one, but I kind of want to try and go through this level without a flashlight guard seeing me. It usually happens at least once, and I've always wanted to try and beat this level without ever getting caught by one of them. Ooh, a gold ring. We should have enough money at this point to grab uh, Bentley's gadget as well, outside of using the treasures of the level. Because like I said, money is never an issue in this game until like the very end of it, because things do get ridiculously okay, expensive. Then. I'm in position inside the guest house. Have any intel for me? Oh, well, I recommend searching all the rooms. It's statistically probable that each should hold at least one portion of a tuxedo. What do I look for inside the rooms? This isn't an exact science. Ransack the place until you find part of a tuxedo. Any plan which involves ransacking is okay with me. Attention guards, this is Lord Rajan. The party here is in full swing and all visitors are now in the ballroom. Wait, this ball may be on the up and up. Not all of the guests are. So be on careful lookout for prowlers. I don't want any bad press from this event. Alright, well, all guards are still gonna attack as they know the fact that there are no, like, extra guests here. Oh, you could say that, Bentley. You gotta be careful of the- oh god, there's actually two flashlight guards patrolling down here. I never noticed them ever having two down here. It's usually just, like, one and he always patrols back there. Oh, oh he's got a shiny. I must have the shiny. Ooh, a gold medal. Don't mind if I do, sir. Alright, good he didn't hear it. One thing I will note, I never actually mentioned it during, like, past levels where, uh, after we got the pickpocketing ability, uh, pickpocketing, uh, pickpocketing ability, is the fact that if you actually do steal all the money off of a guard before you do your slam attack against them through pickpocketing, they will drop nothing. Because, you know, you already stole all their money. Like, the most that they will steal, it, or the most that they will drop it is a health thing to get your ability points back, but... For the, for the most part, it's just, oh, you're just taking out a threat. See? Just like that. And with that, we got ourselves some shoes. And of course, Bentley did say to ransack the place, so we are going to ju do just that. Because these rooms in here actually do have a lot of money in their things, so it's best to just go in here swinging. After you take out the guards, of course, because, uh... I gotta say, this is a pretty nice room. It's got a, it's got like its own personal bathroom. It's got a really weird seating area with a giant TV. I have to break, of course. Uh, we got a nice like fire pit area. I'm guessing this is like a, a seating room where you can just like talk with friends and stuff. Maybe throw a party. Man, I want a hotel room with a giant bonfire in the middle of it. That sounds awesome. Also a major fire hazard. All right, that should be everything, or most everything. I see a couple things over here. I might as well smash. Yep, nothing. Anything inside the bathroom? Some coins. All right, let's get out of here. Now, I like the fact that the excuse of having to go through every single room in this area is the fact that only one would have a portion of a tuxedo and not all of them would, one person would just overpack his, uh, his luggage and would actually have an entire set of a tuxedo with him. This one's gonna be a bit tricky. There are three guards in here, so we can only take out one with the slam move. And the fact that there was a flashlight guard means that we still are gonna have a fight on our hands. So it's a good thing I got the combat dodge ability, even though I've said it in the past that this move is not really the best. Especially with the monkey guards. Alright, well, he's done. And he's done. 
Where is my tux? I think it's here. Or not. Here? There it is. Gloves. But I already got gloves. Like, the dancing shoes, I could understand, but the gloves, I feel like Sly could still get away with wearing the ones he has right now. Alright, smashy, smashy. Now, one thing to note here... If you remember from the first light game, there was uh, levels associated with the barrel that you could use to sneak around. The barrel mechanic does still play into this game, however... Well, never mind, I was going to show it off. Uh, the barrel that you use to sneak around is actually only restricted to this area of this level. Like, I'm kind of sad you don't ever get to use the barrel itself outside of any of the other... Uh, any and ugh, any In any of the other games. Ooh, silver ring. And a smack, and a slam, and a... Oh boy, I'm glad I actually managed to take him out before that snake could hit me, because that snake could actually cancel out the the slam portion, and that guard would just basically be very angry that I tried to kill him. So, while I'm busy cleaning house, I kind of want to tell a little bit of history between me and this game, and how a bit of that history is driving me up the wall because it makes me feel like I'm going absolutely insane about it. So, back when this game first came out, uh, the trailers around this uh, were in, in full with the uh, Toonami block because Toonami and Sly kind of went hand in hand and they had a few crossovers with this series, one of which we'll talk about in a later video. But that's not about that. It's about the trailers of how they actually showed off some of the cheat codes in this game. And at the time, that was the only way for you to figure out that there were cheats in this. I don't remember what it was exactly. Because I don't even think I have a, a recording of it. Because I used to actually record videos on VHSs back in the day. Because I used to like watch a lot of Toonami Block stuff. And it was only like a one-time only thing. And it was stuff I always wanted to rewatch in, in future stuff. But there was a cheat code that was on there that I remember vividly of what it was. I don't remember the code for it is. However, anyone I talk to and any bit of research I do for that cheat code in particular, no one knows about it. No one can recall it. And I have found nothing on all the... The months of research I have done trying to figure out everything about this game, and it's driving me insane. It makes me feel like I'm taking crazy pills. So, the thing of it was, it was basically a gadget that Sly would have, which was a... I guess it would be a decoy uh, gadget, because it was basically what I remember as a kid. A, like, a stuffed Sly on a pole. That you would like throw out and get guards attention and all that stuff and I remember it vividly during the India portion of the game but for whatever reason no one knows about it but me and it's driving me insane I'm sorry shiny so yeah if anyone actually knows what I'm talking about or if anyone has any good ideas about what it might have been I've looked up uh, cut content from this game I've looked up alpha content from this game beta content but nothing ever tells you anything about that one thing but I still remember it vividly even to this day maybe it's just that I have a bad memory and kid me thought of it differently but still it'd be nice to ha finally have some closure on that at some point nothing there Something tells me it's hiding right here. There it is. A freshly pressed shirt. Ooh, 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 ooh. Well, so much for going through this without getting caught by a flashlight guard. Alright, we got a flashlight guard, a reinforcer, 
and that's about it. I'm gonna have to play this super safe because that flat. If I get one, the other's gonna know I'm here. We'll do this. Make a run for it. And while he goes to investigate his friend's unconscious body, to move around, move pretty fast, and take him down. There we go. There. Some tells me it's right here. Or not here. Nope. Aha. It's in the tub. Nope. It's right there. There we go. Got the jacket. That's it. Now that you've got a complete tuxedo, the doormat will let you into the ballroom. And with that, the job is done. Now, we can just uh, walk out the front door, however, I just want to go out here. You can actually go here and not fail the mission. It's actually more preferable to do this. And seeing as how we're done with the job, and we have to go back to the palace, uh, not go that way. I want to go back down here and grab ourselves a monkey. No, I want to grab ourselves the treasure. Drop it off at the safe house, and then we'll make our way back to... back to uh, the job and thankfully this one is actually one that does not have a bomb on it which oh god thank you that there's no bomb on this one because it would be such a pain to get back to the safe house with all these flashlight guards around you I think that's the reason why they didn't put a bomb on it they kind of ease you into uh, the treasures that are strapped with explosives and like in the final level of the game they all have explosives however this one has like one I think the next level has one or two that are uh, on the timer, and then, like, the, they ease it into you more. I think it also takes into effect of, like, guard positions that they put in, so it wouldn't be too much of a hamper for you. Alright, let's head back up here, drop off our treasure, and I will see you back out front of the palace, because that is going to be quite a hike for me. All right, and we've arrived back at the palace. Let's go in and show off our dance moves. You got your tuxedo now, sir? Of course I do. I'm here to dance. Then come on in. Your tuxedo disguise is working perfectly. No one will recognize you in that outfit. Now, during the heist, you'll need to dance with Carmelita to keep both her and the crowd distracted. The only problem is, she's picky about dance partners, so you'll need to impress her first. Alright, I know just the girl for the job. Constable Neela, you look lovely this evening. I'm sorry, do I know you? I used to chase after you back in Paris. Paris? Sly Cooper? You aren't by any chance here to turn yourself in. Old Ironsides would fall out of her dress. As good as that sounds, how about a dance first? Enchanté. Hey Sly, you probably should have, you know, taken off your mask before you went in here because I feel like even Carmelita would probably see through Try this disguise. The steps. Now, one thing I want to do, I want to purposely fail this. And the reason behind that is... Well, can't take anymore. The utter look of defeat on Sly's face. It's amazing. He's just like, oh, I can't dance. He basically dances how I dance in real life. Okay, let's do this for real now. I just really wanted to show that off. Try to memorize the steps. This is basically the Miss Ruby boss fight. You just need to remember the button combos and do it in rhythm. I'm glad we're the only ones dancing too, so this ballroom isn't crowded. Are you using me to get at old iron sides? Yes, I am. Do you mind? Not at all. Hmm. 
Nice. Delicious. That fellow is very graceful. If only you moved spice shipments as well. Oh, silence. Well, that wasn't awkward at all, or clunky. I almost screwed that up as well. Lovely. It looks like Carmelia is not even paying attention to this dance. Thank you. That was delightful. Thank you, Constable Neela. After all, it takes two to tango. Yes, and three is always a crowd. Neela, your friend here is quite an accomplished dancer. I tried to make him look good. Please, Neela. His skills far surpass you. Perhaps later you and I might share a dance, Miss... Miss Fox. Carmelita Fox. And I accept. Now, Carmelita, I, you know this is an undercover job, right? You probably should hide that badge of yours. I now just noticed that she had a badge around her neck. All right. Well, with all that, Sly's job's done, but we still got Murray's job to do. And while I could cut back to going back to the safe house and such, I kind of want to go and grab the final treasure of the area just so that way we can just get it all done in one fell swoop. Just gonna grab that. Thankfully, this one also doesn't have a bomb strap to it, so we're good on it. Just gonna take that, and we're just gonna take the expressway back home. If I can time this elephant just right, it should be a straight shot back home. There we go. And a one. And a two. And back to the safe house. All right, Murray. I will let you go as soon as we get Bentley's gadget. Let's sell those rings. Let's sell the ring. Let's sell the pen. The gold pen. The bronze medal. Gold medal. And you know what? We already got all the treasures. We might as well sell them all in one go because that's what I said I would do. Let's sell the main vase, the ancestral kite, and the burial urn. And already we're at 2,000 coins. It's insane how much you get from these things. All right, let's get Bentley's size stabilizer and let's head out with Murray. Now, the turnbuckle launch, I'm going to put that on the R2 button and basically it's Murray. Uh, it's a high jump for Murray. It, that's all it is. It doesn't take up any, like, gadget points, so you're good and free to use it as many times as you want. I'm going to keep it on to the R2 button. That way it's its own thing. It helps me, like, uh, uh, make it, like, its own thing to let Murray get up into high places and not have to be something that I have to relegate to combat. Also, I feel like having, like, something that uh, relegate, uh, relegates itself to exploring next to another thing that lets Murray run is probably the better choice. Also, he has the most contemplated look every time he does this move. He's just like... Arr! There we go. Excuse me, sir. Alright, that works. It's all covered in missiles and guns and stuff. Now be a team player and take it out with that rusty pre-war turret. Okay, I had a potato gun once. I'll bet it works just the same. You know, I kind of feel bad for these chopper pilots. They're just doing their job. 
They're just trying to protect the palace and the guests inside. Meanwhile, we're gonna mount this AA gun and just shoot him out of the sky. There we go. When it comes to lifting stuff with Murray, it's weird in this game. Uh, I'm sure no one hears the, the gun battle going on outside. So, Murray lifting stuff is inconsistent is probably the best word to use for this. Uh, this mission, it was just, oh, you need to hit the button fast and Murray will lift the stuff up. Other times, it's, uh, it's like you need to hit a button and then swap to a different button that you need to rapidly press or else Murray's strength will fail him. It's only for like one section of the game and then otherwise it's like really fast. Chopper's already down to half health. Come on, get the missile. There we go. I could probably tank a few missile hits and, and you know, take out the chopper easily. But I want to see if I can do this without taking a single hit. The, mer the missiles aren't actually that hard to hit. They just fly in like a very corkscrew-like fashion. But sometimes you can line like two to three missiles up together and take them out with like one uh, volley of shots from this turret. Come on. It's almost done. We can actually take out the chopper before any missiles hit. Any missiles in the air will immediately just detonate, so you don't have to worry about taking any hits from it. There we go, like that. Chopper parts are raining down on the guards below, fires are everywhere, but hey, we got the job done. All right, boys, we're ready for the next phase. My plan to get at the clockwork wings requires the use of the electric winch above the ballroom. To get control over the device, I'll need to hack the computers in Rajad's boardroom. Plus, we'll need an extra strong saw blade to cut the wings off the statue. To make a saw blade that durable, I'll need Sly to steal the gems off the headdresses on Rajad's prize elephants. And finally, I'll take to the field with my remote control helicopter and nullify the palace's surface-to-air defenses. That should clear things up for the heist. 